everybody welcome to a Kickstarter preview now a few years ago at BGG con um, fall I believe it was when it was at the old hotel uh, a couple of young men uh, Jeff and Ty grabbed me as I was walking around and they wanted to show me this game that they were gonna have come to Kickstarter and it was Dawn Shade and I was completely blown away of the quality of the prototype that they had at that point um, and I was very interested and I said you know when you guys go to Kickstarter let me know I'll be more than happy to help well guess what it's finally come to Kickstarter but let me tell you something oh this is a beast and this may be the greatest prototype I have ever received in my life now all everything in here is not the final art but I can tell you this even putting it on the table it, it actually shakes the very foundations of the of my home <laughs> but all in all these are not the final components um, and we're gonna go down to the table I'm not gonna tell you everything there's a lot to this and there's a lot of things but I'm gonna give you a, a really good overview of this and then we'll come back and we'll get my final thoughts on Dawn Shade. Trust me, this is something special. Now, once again, this takes up a huge imprint and I'm not gonna be able to show you everything. And as you can see here, I, I don't even have everything out on the table. So we're gonna break this down into sections. The amazing thing about this is how this game's broken up. You have here where you're going to actually keep a, a track of your threat, your level, and your XP that you're going to uh, grab. This is the Vaki board. This is where you're going to get the elements to, to be able to uh, cast and, and have certain abilities. And you're going to be trying and vying to get all this uh, Vaki. Over here, you're going to be having your travel board or your quest board. You're going to be taking your kinship and moving throughout here and dealing with different situations, going to outposts, going to town, battling, and then eventually you're uh, running into the, the major threat. Over here is where all your battling is going to be done. And some of your dexterity tests and games and things like that and gambling even. Um, there's, there's different parts of this that are actually used for, this board is used for to, to perform dexterity challenges which are really, inter really, really add a different type of feel to this game. And then, of course, we're going to have our player boards, which we're going to take a look at. But first, let's start breaking down each board. The first board that we're going to take a look at is the quest board. Now, the active player is going to make all the decisions, and that's the person that's going to actually have this chip on their character, which we'll take a look at the characters in a little bit. They're going to decide where to move the kinship. Now, the kinship, if they decide to move, say they want to come here, they're going to turn over and this is going to be a journey. They're going to have to match up roads here and then move the kinship. Now in doing that, every move that you make moves the threat level. Once the threat level gets to 11, you're going to face the major boss. The major boss is always on the bottom of the pile of quest cards. And, and there's going to be different things that you're going to need to set up for the quest here. As you move and possibly you, you're going to place it in a a spot where you can get one of these tokens. These tokens are going to help you along the way and whoever does it is going to get it and keep it and they'll have different things that they can do like you can get plus one Vaki and things like that or plus one attack. But moving through this board is essential because that's pretty much how you're going to go. You can always come back to a village and shop once you get a bunch of Tawny. Now Tawny is the currency in Dawnshade as you can see and 10 tawny equal well one glint so you're going to be vying for this you're going to be gambling for this you're going to be going on adventures and trying to get this the story is going to give you tawny but tawny is going to help you get items and items are going to be essential to helping you defeat enemies again when we talk take a look at the character board and we take a look at the battle board this will all be explained now, once you go back to the center of town, and I moved the map so we can take a look at, there, you're going to have a chance to be able to shop. And you're going to put out a bunch of different cards, and you're going to use your 
Tony to be able to purchase some of these items. Remember, you are limited to whatever items, uh, uh, the amount of items that you're going to be able to carry depending on where you are skill-wise on your player board but we'll talk about that when we get to our player board but you will be taking out and there's all kinds of different types of cards here that are going to help you and items that will be able to help you get through some of the things that you do uh, that you're going to need to do to defeat the enemies and as you level up you'll be able to buy better and and more uh, more stuff that'll help you get far right here we're going to talk about some of the tiles that you're going to go through you're going to just journey through here, and of course, it's going to up your threat. Every time you go through one of these tiles, it's going to up your threat. But here's the th thing. Every time you go through this tile, you're going to get 4 XP. When you go to an outpost, you're going to get 2 XP. Battle? Well, you're going to battle, and you'll get a certain amount of battle, uh, battle points for defeating. And as you can see, there's two battles here. And then, of course, the major threat, which will end that particular chapter. Um, or, or part of the story, you're going to face the major threat for that particular quest. Now, going through here, like I said, you're going to attribute different things and you're going to move. And as you start putting some of these out, the farther that you have to go back is the more threat that you're going to have to turn that dial up. Now, the whole point is to try to get as much XP to level up to face the final threat. So now we're going to talk about how we're going to level up and how we're going to get to where we need to be. Now here, this is your va uh, Vaki board. This Vaki board here is really where you're going to get uh, some of the elements so that you can power some of the abilities that you have and it's going to keep track of a lot of things. It's going to take 10 XP for the group to level up. Every time you level up, you're going to be become stronger and be able to get training points to up your character. We'll talk more about that when we take a look at our character board. But as you can see, we have nature, sun, fire, uh, mountain, um, air, and water. These are the elements that you're going to do. Uh, the level one elements are going to be water, sun, mountain, and these are going to be able to be combined to make tier two. So as you can see, this is a tier one. If you took mountain and sun and put them together, well, you would get a fire, which is a tier two. That's going to help you uh, unleash powerful spells and also unleash these dice that are going to be on your character. Well, We'll, we'll talk more about that also. Um, nature, uh, nature, which is a tier two, but you're going to need to take water and um, I believe it is sun to make nature. And, uh, and then finally, you're going to need to take a mountain and water to make air. Okay, uh, which is down here, of course. You're going to be trying to get as many of these uh, these Vaki so you can unleash and make your character more powerful and use abilities to help you in combat and, of course, defeat the major threat. Now, let's go take a look at our characters. Now, in Dawnshade, there are a ton of unbelievable characters. And of course, these are all prototype boards, but they are absolutely beautiful. You're going to have Wisp. You're going to have Potem, Flash, and then of course the person I'm going to be taking a look at is Ash. Now I'm going to explain some of the things on these um, boards so you understand things a little bit better. You have agility here. This is how many dice you're going to be able to roll. Uh, attack, that's how many attack dice. That's a red die you'll be able to roll. Hit points, obviously, how many hit points you're going to have. Items, how many items you are going to be able to carry. And then, of course, defense, which is how many defense dice you can roll. And then, of course, uh, dev, which is going to be how many Vaki dice you can roll. Because remember, you can roll these and get a certain amount of Vaki. You're going to try to attribute and build up as much Vaki as you can so you can use some of these ability cards. Okay, now these ability cards are going to be depending on 
uh, unlocking these dice. And as you unlock them and unleash them, you're going to be able to get a chance to roll them. But you can never roll more than three dice here. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're going to be giving three training points, and you're going to apply that anywhere. So you may want to have two defense, two, uh, a two attack, two defense. You know, it's up to you. Maybe uh, be able to carry more items or just up your hit points, however you want to do it. Remember, if you up your defense dice to two and your attack dice to two and your your uh, Vaki dice to one, that's five dice. But at any time, you can only roll three. Another neat thing is as you are rolling, if you are getting misses, you're going to be able to put, for every miss, um, move the overdrive cube. The overdrive cube is going to keep on moving to eventually give you a special abilities. You're going to have very special abilities that are going to help you in battle and help you move on. You're also going to be given a chip, okay, and you're going to be that particular person, and that is going to be on the battle board. So, without further ado, let's now take at probably the most versatile board on the whole game. That's the battle board. Finally, we're at the battle board. And when you come to a battle, the story will tell you certain things. We're going to take a look at the book as well and just kind of point you through some things. Now, should it tell you to pick a certain enemy, everything that you need is on the back here. As you can see, three HP, three shields. Here's your shields. Here's your HP. You would take your HP and then your shields, and then you would put them in the appropriate slot. Uh, you would also get your heroes ready and get ready for battle. You have a deck here which will determine who is going to take damage from the enemy. Now, how do you determine initiative? Well, that's The game simple. comes with the Dawn Shade bag, and we have both numbers here, number one, number two, and then two green chips in here to represent our, um, our heroes. We'll shake it up, and depending on how many players, and we're going to say two players for this, we are going to pull out two chips. And as you can see, number one would go second. And as I pulled it out, of course, our heroes would go first. Whoever has the initial, uh, whoever uh, is the uh, deciding player gets to go first. And uh, if we were to pull out two of these, the chip would get passed over to the next person and that would be the main player. Now, you would attack. Now, coming back over here, if you remember, we talked about how you would go about making an attack. Right now, Ash has two hit die and two defense die. But to roll, I'm going to want to roll two attack die and one uh, shield of dice. We're going to roll it, and anytime it has a hit, like for instance here, we have three, we have two hits here. And then we have a special ability. We would be able, if we were able to, is to initiate a special ability. But we're going to be able to do two damage to a target. So we would take off their shields. Okay, and say, let's say that I decided to do that and their shields go. But also we rolled one on a shield. We would be able to, well, put a shield onto our hero. We can never have more than three shields at any time underneath the character. And that also goes for the enemy. Now the enemy, on the other hand, would get, after we win, they would get their turn. So our particular enemy, would we would turn over, and we would see that they get one attack die and two defense die. So we would take one of each, and then we would roll. And as you can see, uh, they got to do one special ability. They are going to have a special minor ability, which is Dark Prophecy, okay? And that's going to um, cause dread amongst our, our poor heroes. Another thing here is that each round, it, I, I, we're going to fight for five rounds, okay? But the nasty, nasty part of this is that after each round and as we survive, if we ever get down to two, they're going to get an ultimate ability. And this ultimate ability is the sum of all fears. And trust me, their ultimate abilities are nothing to mess with. Now, 
you don't die in this. You get knocked out. If any of us ever should run out of shields and health, well, guess what? We are continued continue knocked out. Should we get down to the very end and we have one hero left, we would flee. Okay, only because we would count up how much health each have. And obviously our, our villains right here have more health. So in the book, it would show you what you would get. You would get a lesser thing. If we were both knocked out, it would be even worse. We would see what happens for a complete loss. If they were, if we were to get a minor victory and drive them off, we would get a little reward. But if we were able to defeat them as a whole, we would get the ultimate prize. When they, they take a hit against us, we're going to turn over a card, and that's going to decide who's going to take the hit. So obviously, uh, as you can see, because she did get knocked out, that she ultimately took the hit. <sighs> well, that is just what we do for battling on this board. Okay, This board is used for a lot more, because the one thing that we haven't talked about yet is cog bots. Okay? And these are interesting little fellows and how they come about. As you can see, uh, there's all kinds of different cogs. So what do they do? Well, let's talk about that next. Now this is where the game gets really interesting. There's going to be times when you're going to be able to go into a tavern and sometimes gamble. You're going to be taking all the player cards that are of all the players and what you're going to be doing is you may put up um, a couple of tawny and say you know something each player is going to put up a couple of tawny and you're going to turn over these cards and every time you turn over a card you're going to get one tawny so we would win one tawny right there which is fine. Oh now we're up to two tawny and uh oh we got a rune if we were ever to get two runes we would lose everything so you got to decide when to stop boy if i get another rune here i'm going to be finished should i press it uh, i did and i lost everything and that's how you're going to lose tawny and it's going to set you back which guess what it's going to cause you nothing but problems also in the tavern, there is a game called Double Dice, which we're not going to show you, but we will show you when we do the live play. But the guys we want to talk about are these little cog guys, okay? These guys here play, play quite a bit of a dexterity battle in this game. You can run into an area where you want to uh, have a what is called a cog battle, and each player will spin... <laughs> and as you can see, as long as they stay on, that's fantastic. And uh, whoever's the last spinning, which was our friend here, would win. And the first uh, three victories, uh, depending on how many points they have, as you can see, they have different uh, values. If that guy was to win, uh, if we had two and two, actually like that, well, as you can see, they have two, three, and they have four at the end of the battle we would actually win but should we had should we have had just uh, one of the uh, one of these uh, and it landed like that and they were actually better than us uh, even though we had lesser if we had more point values we would win now also there is a thing called treasure trap okay which is quite the interesting thing because you're going to take and you're going to have certain health things and you can't hit them you actually have to try to oh well that didn't work you have to get off the other side of the board and you get to do this three times and well that wasn't good let's see if we can do it again oh we did it so we would win but if we were to hit this and knock these off it's an automatic fail which is not good then on top of that you can fight cogs you can have a you can have an attack where cogs are being attacked and you would have to actually take one of these and you would have to try to hit some of the other cogs and there's a ton of different let's try one here uh, well I wasn't very good at that let's try again oh I hit him 
so that would cause a hit point but every time they would keep on moving forward and once they get to you well that ain't good either so there's a ton of different types of dexterity games that that are played here and i'm not going to show them all to you but it adds just more flavor to this game there's also dice rolling where you're going to be trying to beat certain abilities as a team and you're going to have to roll dice from this side through here and and, and so many different variances so that pretty much talks about the battle board and there's just so much going on in this just really wonderful game let's take a look at the storybook now this here is the prototype rule book and dear god almighty it's done beautifully. I, I've never read a prototype rule book that was this good. The quality that these guys, that Ty and Jet, have put into this, uh, their illustrators, uh, Dennis, uh, the art director, Michael, uh, their community manager, everybody put, had a hand in this, and this is really, really just amazing, and I really think, guys, that you need to check this out. Uh, illustrated beyond beyond beauty. And I'm going to pull this up a little bit so you guys can just get an idea of how well this was done. And this is only the prototype, folks. Can you imagine what the real thing's like? But the real hero of this, this game is the logbook. Because this is how everything is going to be done. It's through here. There's going to be three chapters. It gives you a whole bunch of uh, quick reference on how to set everything up. And then here comes some beautiful story on how everything is going to go. Uh, like we had talked about, the guild hall, the tavern hall, the mercantile, the foundry, and all these things. And how each level, as they go up, they do different things, different games in the tavern, like we talked about with the games. Uh, I, I don't want to ruin too many things. Beautiful, beautiful event zero, how everything plays out. Things change, okay? For every success and failure brings different types of things and this bit book is thick i mean there is a lot going on and i'm not showing you much more than this but i'm telling you right now this is truly amazing and uh wow all i can say is dawn shade coming to kickstarter let's go up top and get my final thoughts first of all amazing and the story uh, there is a ton of replayability and i know these guys are going to come out with three times the amount of stuff there's a lot of stuff i didn't cover i actually made a mistake too and i rolled a uh, special die when i should have rolled a, an attack die when i called out the special but hey that's all right there's a lot going on here and there's a lot i missed you know we didn't talk about the foundries and how you can get uh, cog behemoths or a boom shot gallery we didn't even cover all the dexterity games there were just so many different things and the different levels of the travel uh, the treasure traps and how to how to play that I mean just so much to this game and the replayability is there because it's never the same this is an amazing going to be an amazing Kickstarter because if this is the prototype I can't wait to get my hands on the finished product. And I don't think you can either. Now, I believe that the Kickstarter is going to be May 20th, if I'm not, not correct. And uh, I'll, we'll double check that and we'll update you as it gets closer. Um, but I'm telling you right now, this is a game that you are going to want to back. This is amazing. Uh, it does so many different and in, in interesting things um, the Faki how that all comes together the battling the traveling the race against time before the major threat am I powerful enough to take these guys out what happens when I lose a battle am I going to be able to to recover enough am I going to be able to get the right items am I going to be able to level up enough and 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 pick the right abilities to face the major threat that I'm going to face incredible fantastic check out the kickstarter you're not going to be disappointed these guys have been dead on and put their hearts and soul in it and you could feel and see the passion that they put into this game i don't think you are going to be disappointed definitely check it out dawn shade coming soon to kickstarter guys you're gonna love it until next time
It's your old pal Rob. We'll see you soon.